Java long perm support JDK 25 will be released this September and has many amazing features, but some of them are in a preview, so be aware that they can change. To unlock these new features in the IntelliJ, you have to go to a project structure and download the Oracle OpenJDK 25 and then set the language level to preview or to experimental features to get all of the new stuff that comes with the Java JDK 25. And first thing we can see is that modifier public is redundant for main and we have the explicit class declaration. So let's use it. And now, instead of having to write this long as class uh, public static void main, we just have void main. So all of the Java memes for the past 30 years are gone. We now in Java 25 finally <laughs> don't have to do all of this. I hope that it will be the same as like in the C sharp, so we wouldn't have to even write this. But still, this is much better. And this feature is aim of the new guys who come to Java uh, and are learning Java so we don't have to confuse them with all this static and what is static, what is public, what is everything, what is class and they have to only know this one uh, method declaration. Obviously this whole file is now part of the main class that is declared implicitly. So all of the, like for example, private uh, int uh, test it's part of this method now. And for example, test equals one, uh, equals one. Okay. And we can all uh, uh, use all of these classes. If we use class, for example, test, it's inner class of method. Okay. So what is the next feature? Because next feature, I, I just love, I just love the next feature I'm going to uh, show you. That is obviously the flexible constructor bodies. For example, we have some class uh, person. Person has some uh, fields like, for example, private uh, string name, age, for example, and the constructor. And we have some, for example, class called mark. And mark extends the person. Marks is very, mark is very good extender of person. Okay. And we need to call supper to uh, to our person. But previously, we couldn't do one super cool thing. That is, print, for example, stuff here, uh, print name, or for example, validate some data, like, uh, I don't know, name uh, equals uh, mark, for example. And if not, a throw exception, new, uh, ah, some ex just some exception. Uh, if need to, a uh, hundred exception, so maybe throw a runtime exception, okay? And previously we had to call the constructor from the parent class that might have some like heavy operations before we even validated the data in our constructor. For example, uh, in this case, if this person is not called Mark, why would we even uh, create a, create this person if it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have data that is validated. So I know that my uh, professor in university will just love this feature because uh, he came up with so much like uh, workarounds uh, 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 around the fact that you couldn't do this in Java and now all of this is redundant. So <laughs> a new, new generation of students will just love this feature so they didn't have to deal with uh, these weird ideas of this professor and shout out to him for for coming up with this. Next feature are primitive type patterns. And this, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, before we go to primitive type pattern, uh, I want to show you another feature that is also in preview. So it can, can change, but probably wouldn't want. And it's the model imports declarations. So it works like this. We have import module, which is like, it was, uh, we had this before, but uh, Java base, for example, and if we, for example, go with Java SQL, both of these uh, modules have the date class declared. So if I go, for example, for var date and go for date uh, value of, and we get reference to date is ambiguous now because both of these classes have this. 
So what we can do since the Java 25 is to do something like this, import Java SQL date. And now we impl implicitly declare that this, uh, sorry, explicitly declare that we are using the date from the SQL and we still can uh, import both of these modules, but we are using date from Java SQL. And now I can finish this, for example, go with local date now and now print it and we'll see that it should work. And we get today's date, which is 11th of August. Okay, next feature, it's the primitive type patterns, which is also super cool, but uh, may maybe not, not that super useful, but also I think it's, it's, uh, it's needed. Uh, so let's go with, for example, uh, public void test. Test will get some object object. And now instead of having to use uh, objects, we can, for example, go with if object instance of int e and print this integer. So object is integer uh, n plus e. Okay. And instead of, for example, having to call it here integer or like a string, uh, so string is not primitive type. So for example, maybe uh, float. We can, for example, use here float. Can use int, can use char, uh, so all of the primitive types. So let's test, for example, int or test uh, one and test, for example, if we go maybe with a float. Will it work also? Yeah, obviously it it doesn't work for uh, the the float, right? It only works for the integer. So this is next a preview feature. It's in a third preview. I'm looking at my notes. It's in the third preview. So it probably won't change, but maybe will change in next version. Also, we get some API enhancements that are also cool. For example, we get scoped values, which is a light, lightweight, immutable alternative to thread local. And for, for those who don't know, thread local is basically an a independent copy of variable for each thread. And these uh, scoped values are designed for visual, virtual threads. So how does it look like? Let's go with static uh, final scoped value, okay? Uh, and go, for example, for string and call this user. New scoped value, uh, sorry, new instance of scoped value. And now in our main method, I will I will try with resources and bar executor. Okay, new executors, executors, uh, new virtual thread per task executor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now in our executor, I will go executor submit, uh, go with lambda here for the task and scope the value where user, maybe call, it, call him Bob. Okay, and run. Okay, mm, and this task will be just printing this user south uh, user mm -hmm, and user and get. Okay, and I will also make maybe a copy of it uh, and just change the name, for example, Alice. Mm. Mark and maybe my name, so Oscar. Okay, and now let's go thread sleep, for example, for 100 milliseconds. Okay, also, we need to add uh, not catch what I was uh, want to add. I mean, my catch, catch is okay, catch is okay. Let's go with run, and as you can see, we get different values for all of these um, all of all of these uh, threads so as you can see it works the virtual threads are the future of java so i think that we we are uh, we getting this new scope values is super important next thing we have is the structured concurrency which is a simplified uh, managing a tool for related concurrent tasks so how would we uh, do this is 
First of all, I need to create some uh, example class. So let's go for class uh, example. Okay. And this class will have some static uh, string that will, for example, fetch a user. Okay. We will throw the interrupter, interrupter exception. And this will, for example, sleep for uh, 100 milliseconds. Okay. Uh, and return our username, for example. Uh, I don't know, uh, Bob. Okay. And we also get um, maybe not a patch password, but some data. Data. Okay. And it will also sleep for different amounts because I will show you how, how, how it will be synchronized. And instead of working on Bob, we return, for example, 1000 in a string. Okay. In, now in our main method, I will go for try with resources again. Var scope equals structured task scope okay and here dot string and open okay uh, i'm looking at my notes and did i do something wrong here uh, mm -mm -mm. task scope string ah there should be open here okay mm, and go with this bar and uh, user task for example and scope Fork, example, and patch user. Okay. And now go with data task for scope, fork, example, and patch data. Okay. As you can see, this feature is uh, in the preview, so it may be removed. We get these warnings, but don't worry about it for now. I want to show you how this looks like. And now we go for scope join. And now we go for south and basically print both of these tasks. So plus uh, add some separator and data task. Okay. And you also need to add uh, let's add, uh, the catch close. And if you run this, you will see that this will wait. Uh, don't think uh, did I didn't print it? Uh, 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 something is wrong here. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, yeah, I know what what was wrong. I didn't use the get. Okay, so that was mistake on my part. And as you can see, now we get our task printed. It waits for both of these tasks to finish because uh, they have different, uh, different uh, durations, and then it merges these tasks to one scope and. Uh, we can, for example, print data that is from, from both of these tasks. Okay, next feature is stable value API. And stable value API is also very cool. It's a lazy mutable value that is trade safe and efficient. And it's optimized for JVM because it's uh, treated as a final value. And it's also in a preview. So it can change, but uh, probably it won't. So it works like this. We get for example, var greeting, uh, stable value uh, of string, and get off here, okay? And now, for example, if you want to initialize it, we go for string uh, hello, the greeting, or else set, and here we provide lambda um, stable value, okay? Provide the supplier, and now we can print this Hello. Basically, it is uh, lazy, so it's initialized when when we use it for the first time, so it doesn't waste our memory. And also, it's treated as a fi as final, as I said, so we get some cool optimizations from the JVM. Also, there are a few different important changes, but I I I don't uh, I know how to show them for you on the video. But because basically the Java Flight Recorder gets some improvements like CPU time profiling for better performance diagnostics, uh, cooperative sampling to reduce profiling overhead, and method timing and tracing for deterministic method and, uh, called data. Also, the JVM is preparing for the ahead of time compilations. So we get some like uh, stuff uh, that is related to this. And we get more compact object headers. So we have res, uh, less uh, memory footprint on object headers on 64-bit systems. If you want to participate in a growing community of Java and Spring Boot developers, 
check out the top link in the description. Here's the next video YouTube thinks you should watch. Until the next time, create some amazing applications.